Hey everyone, this is Tetsuo, the storyteller. The following camping stories were posted in the Reddit community. The first story is by user Rebecca Harley Quinn. Second story by Tessa Engine Seven Fifty Six, and the last story is by JB Twenty Three Eighty Nine. Some names and details have been edited to remove identifying features or to fix the flow of the story. Remember to like, share, and subscribe to Tetsuo Tells a Story on YouTube and Apple Podcast Providers. Let's get on with these three true scary camping stories. Story 1 Titled Chickasaw National Park Encounter This incident happened when I was 20 years old. I had left home when I was 16 years old and decided to explore the world and see what I could find. I have been to Texas and Louisiana most of my life. I had been raised in Louisiana for the most part. I went from Missouri to New York, California, anywhere in the United States I could have decided to go. However, I decided to go home. Well, up until then, I have been staying in Oklahoma when I received a phone call from my mom saying that she might be dying from cancer. I came to find out later that she actually wasn't dying from cancer. She just wanted me home. I was hitchhiking through Oklahoma and was near the Chickasaw National Park. In two days, I hadn't been able to catch a ride. Sticking out my thumb, doing all that, and nobody stopped. So I said, oh well, and I pitched a tent in the National Park. I decided to explore some and I followed the paved road until I got to the camping area. There was a fire pit off a little ways from the road and it was a clear area. There were picnic tables, so I decided that's where I was gonna camp that night. I decided to explore a little bit and followed a deer trail into the woods. As I was walking, I looked to my left on the ground and there was a hawk laying there with no head as if it's been burned off. An eerie feeling came over me, but I brushed it away as me being paranoid. I already had some paranormal experiences, but never came across one where it involved animals. So I walked away and went back to the area that I had decided to pitch my tent that night. I sat there until it started getting dark, and I set my tent up. I left the tent flap open because it was very cool in the afternoon. Finally, night came. The street lamps that were along the paved road came on. The lights were actually good enough to where I could actually read a book. At that time, I was reading Anne Rice, Queen of the Damned. As the time went on, I started to get sleepy. I reached up to zip up my tent flap and looked over at the street light that was directly in front of my tent. Standing there directly under the street light was a creature tall as the street light itself. Well, Maybe not as tall, but maybe a couple inches directly under it. Its hair was very, very long, and it looked a little hunched. I couldn't see any eyes because the hair seemed to be in front of its face. It was in black as far as I could tell. But what little skin seemed to stick out was white as chalk, and what little skin I could see was its hands, which clearly went past its knees. The hands were just hanging there. Its nails were very black, so dark that it seemed to absorb the light. It just stood there, and it seemed as if the air surrounding it was vibrating, as if there was some type of static around it. Now, don't get me wrong, I was very startled and afraid I didn't know what this was. Then suddenly, underneath the hair, I could see white start to show, and it was as if the creature was smiling at me. It stood there for a very long time. 
Finally, as I was looking at it, something came over me. Now, you may not believe me. You might say this story isn't true. But I know that it happened. I know it happened to me. I grew angry. I grew very angry. I felt a rage inside me, and it grew very strong. I stared the creature down. I got out of my tent, stood up, and I looked straight at it and said, I am not afraid of you. and You have no power over me. It seemed to make the creature laugh. And all it did was make me even more angry. I stood my ground. I again told it, I am not afraid of you. You have no power over me. I stood there staring at it for what seemed like the longest time while hot rage was growing inside me when all of a sudden I heard a loud snap right behind me. I turned around quickly to find out what the noise was. There was nothing there. And then a thought suddenly occurred that this thing was probably behind me now. I turned around again and looked towards the streetlight and it was no longer there. I bundled up my sleeping bags after it disappeared. That night, as I slept, I had a horrible nightmare of the creature standing over me, laughing with a toothy grin. The next morning, I packed my stuff and looked towards the streetlight where the thing had been standing. There was blood on the street lamp pole. I no longer had that anger that I felt. I was actually very scared. So I gathered up all my stuff and got out of there as fast as I could. I headed to the highway, stuck up my thumb, and thankfully someone picked me up. I have never been back to Chickasaw Park since that night. I never planned on going there ever again. A word of warning, be careful where you camp. You never know what you might come across. You might not believe what I have written, but it did happen, and it happened to me. Story 2 Titled, Minnesota Camping A little backstory. I'm Tessa. I'm 14. I live in Minnesota, and I go to this one campground up north. It's kind of in the middle of nowhere. I've gone to that campground for 11 years and still go there to this day. It's been open for only a year or two before I started going there. My family is really popular there and they're always having a party and staying up till one drunk as heck. However, this particular night haunts me forever. Me and my friend Chloe were best friends and she was the shy brunette, and I was the wild blonde. She always has this thing where she never liked sleepovers. This one night, me and her planned on having a sleepover in a tent outside her actual camper. Our parents did not stay out late that one night for some reason. We had a bonfire and did regular camping things. It was about 1 a.m. when we decided to go to this shower house. So we were in the shower house planning to just hang out because the shower house and the lodge are the only two places that had Wi-Fi. My data wasn't working because it's in the middle of nowhere. So we plan on staying there till 3 a.m. However, an hour later, around 2 a.m., We needed chargers because our phones were dying. We headed back to our camper and grabbed our chargers. On our way back, we were outside the shower house to catch some fresh air before we head inside. Chloe is on her phone and around the corner behind her was an old guy or maybe a woman. It looks to be fairly old and it looks like they're walking a giant rat. I screamed. And I tell her what I see. And the guy has a crazy smile on him. We ran as fast as we could. And then we got inside of the bathhouse. 
I started crying because I was so scared. And she is freaking out because she does not know what was just behind her. We plugged in our chargers. We hesitated to call either of our parents. We felt like they would get really mad at us and not even believe us as we were out until 3 a.m. We weren't even supposed to be up past 1 that night. So now we're freaking out and ready to just bust the door because we've been in there for an hour at this point. Past the time we saw the creepy old man. We hesitated to open the door but ended up opening it. The whole time I was thinking, we're gonna die. And we ran out the door. And as I turn around, I see the creepy old man with something that looks like a knife in his hand. Right around the corner where we almost got stabbed. To this day, we almost always remember this night. P.S. Our parents believed us and was really mad at us for not telling them. Story 3 titled, A Cough Saved My Life. My name is Jason. This is what happened when I was about 16 years old. I'm 27 now. What happened that day would change everything. I live in West Virginia where there is mountains all around. So I grew up in the woods, hunting, camping, and riding ATVs. So one day, me and my two friends, Brian and Jesse, went out on our ATVs to find a place to camp that weekend. This was Thursday, and we wanted to find a place to camp on Saturday. We went pretty far into the woods to try and find the best spot we could because we were bringing our girlfriends camping with us. So we get probably five or six miles back into the woods and find this little lake and we knew we found it. So we get off and check everything out, making sure it wasn't private property or anything, but there was no signs and a house wasn't around for miles. This is it, Jesse said, and we all agree. It was perfect. So we all get back on our four wheelers and head back knowing that Saturday would be a night to remember. But what we didn't know was it was going to be the worst night of our lives. So we get back, the next day we get all our gears loaded up, fishing poles, tents, sleeping bags. We made sure we had everything we needed to make it a fun night, including three bottles of Mad Dogs and a bottle of Bud Light and 30 packs of Bud Light in a cooler. So we were ready. We met up at around 11 o'clock Saturday morning and head out to a perfect camping spot. When we got there, it was great to put the tents up. Got firewood set up and everything up. The girls loved it, except for Brian's girlfriend. We'll call her Kate. She said she felt uneasy but we figured it was just because she's never been camping before. So we started fishing and swimming and drinking. Well, typical everything teenagers do. But Kate just wanted to look around and wouldn't join us at all. It just sat by the lake. Finally, it started to get dark. So we started a fire and made some hot dogs and just sit around it telling the stories everything you do when you camp it's about 11:30 p.m. when Jesse's girlfriend Sam says she has to go pee and Kate goes with her they were gone for about maybe 4 minutes when they came back saying that Kate saw something behind a tree watching them I grabbed my 9mm Smith that I brought with me and Jesse and I went to check it out. We didn't find anything so we thought the scary campfire stories just freaked them out. We got back and told them that we didn't find anything but Kate said she knows what she saw and wants to leave. 
We told her to chill out and me having a gun kind of put her mind at ease. After about 30 to 45 minutes, we were all ready to lay down and spend alone time with our significant others. And no one is even thinking about what Kate saw anymore. I wish we would have left because about an hour goes by that my girlfriend, Lindsay, who was asleep, but I'm just laying there listening to the sound of the woods when I start to hear footsteps. At first, I think it's no one. It's probably one of the others, but then I could tell whoever was walking was trying to do it quietly. The footsteps stop at my tent door. I start to freak out inside, but don't make a sound. They stand there for at least three minutes and then I see the zipper start to slowly unzip. I started to grab my gun when I realized I left it in my bag at the campfire. I'm so stupid, I'm thinking. So the zipper moves about six inches slowly. When Lindsay coughs, it <coughs> stops. <coughs> She's still asleep and doesn't know that someone or something is trying to sneak into her tent. I hear nothing for about five minutes and then footsteps again was sneaking away from our tent. I can't move. I'm so terrified. All I can do is stay quiet and hope it doesn't come back. 30 minutes pass when all of a sudden the most craziest evil sounding scream I've ever heard from from the tent right over Brian and Kate's and they started screaming <coughs> no please no I jumped up running out of the tent and by now Lindsay is awake and I run right to my bag for my gun Lindsay right beside me terrified not knowing what's going on I take out the gun and look at their tent what I see still haunts me to this day. This pale white long arms with long claws at the end of its stretched fingers. It looked like a humanoid type thing, just taking chunks out of Brian, biting him. I fire my gun and it looks up. Its yellow eyes glared right into my soul. I'm shaking. As it starts galloping towards us, Lindsay starts screaming. I fire again, and it takes off right into the woods, screaming that awful, awful scream. We run up to their tent, and Jesse and Sam seen it all happen too. We all run to Brian and Kate's tent, but it was too late. They were both tore up. I couldn't even tell who was who. The girls were crying, and Jesse puked, and I felt like I was in a nightmare. Suddenly, I had tunnel vision. I was scanning the woods, hoping whatever that was, wasn't coming back. Jesse and the girls were all huddled up to me as we made our way to the ATVs. I'm looking at the woods the whole time, with the gun pointed towards the way that thing ran off. We get to the ATVs, and I realized the keys are in the, the tent in my pant pockets. About that time, we hear that thing scream again. I tell them to wait there. I gotta go back and get the keys. I didn't have much of a choice as I didn't want to go back. I ran as fast as I could to the tent to grab the keys. And as I was about to turn back, there it was coming out of the woods, running straight right at me. I rose my gun and started firing. I hit it because it yelped and screamed. And it turned back and ran right into the woods again. I ran back to the ATVs and we rode out of there so fast, I'm surprised we didn't wreck and kill ourselves. We went right to the cops and told them everything that happened. They went up to where we were, came back right what seemed like forever, and took us back there with them. This time, it was lights out. We get back there and everything was destroyed. The tents were ripped up. Stuff is thrown everywhere. They take me up to Brian's tent and there was blood everywhere, but no bodies. 
The cop says, where are they? I said, I, I don't know. They were here when we left. That thing must have took them. Then they started saying, it looks like a bear who did this and trying to say we were drunk and it must have been mistaken for what we've seen. I know what I've seen and whatever it was, wasn't even close to look like a bear. It's been over 10 years and Brian and Kate's body have never been found. It was written up as a black bear attack. I never talked about it to anyone. Jesse and Sam got married and moved to Florida. Lindsay and I broke up not long after what happened, so I don't even know where she moved to. What still gets me is whatever that was, was at our tent first. But Lindsay coughed and it went to Brian and Kate's tent. I don't know why, but I know a cough saved my life. Thanks everyone for listening in on these three true scary camping stories. And truth be told, I've actually never gone camping. One of my professors used to always say, Tetsuo, camping is for people pretending to be homeless. (laughs) Though, hopefully in the future, I do get to go camping. If you enjoyed these three stories, Please remember to like, share, and subscribe to Tetsuo Tells a Story. Again, you can find me on YouTube and podcast providers. Do you have a story to tell? Let me know and I can read it to the world. See you on our next episode.